Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. You know, for the longest time we've been having this debate of um, who are Egyptians, why Egyptians black or why Egyptians white, you know, and different people have their beliefs in regards to this. And some people claim that Egypt is entirely white. Um, some people claim that Egypt was black. And this is uh, a debate which has always been there. And one thing which is interesting is how this um, white man came up with facts and told everyone this and they he told them that um entirely that egyptian was black and something interesting that he says in the video that i also want us to watch this video and then um as you always know topics like this i always do my research first i don't always let i uh, just like talking to the camera without facts so that i add my presentation with me here so that being said, after this video, I'm going to tell you, um, maybe we'll try to break it down and give you facts that shows that truly Egypt was black and it is black. So um, let's watch the video and then come back, say something about it. As we get into this is this family picture album you see the two letters a and c circled red ivan van sertima said this by the way is a picture from uh, ramses the third's tomb right around uh, 1200 bc and uh, what this is all about is that ivan van sertima states that the egyptians always pictured themselves as a and c not as B and D. We have the Semitic D and the Indo-Europeans and Asiatics B. And uh, I just wanted to throw that in just uh, to understand what's going on. 33 dynasties since the beginning of Egypt. And uh, what happens here is that um, you have different events that happen during each dynasty and you can take a look at those because we're going to be revisiting this in a little bit each time as we go through this. This is uh, Khafre. Uh, Tutmosis III put a plaque between the paws of the Sphinx of Giza stating that Khafre had something to do with the construction of the Sphinx. Now some folks believe that he was the one who designed it, it was designed after him. There's an artist out of New York City who works for detectives and police getting skulls and then reconstructing the facial features of the skulls so that they can identify who the victim was. He has actually done some analysis on this and doesn't believe that it was Khafre, but uh, whoever it was, um, I mean, you be the judge, you can take a look at uh, two pictures side by side. That's Khafre in the, British, in the uh, Cairo Museum and then the Sphinx of, of Giza. Count Constantine de Volnay, during a, a trip to Egypt in seven, from eight, 1783 to 1785, said this, and I quote, he says, on seeing that head, what head? The Sphinx of Giza. Typically Negro in all its features, I remembered the remarkable passage of Herodotus. The ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. Just to think that this race of black men today are slaves and the object of scorn, the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. Now, I, I, I want to ask this question. What would motivate him to say this phrase typically Negro in all its features. Could it be perhaps this? This was a an artist's conception, uh, Vivant Dinan, who accompanied Napoleon's army, 1798. This is his artist's conception of the Sphinx of Giza. Before what happened? Before the lips and the nose were shot off by Napoleon's troops. That is verifiable because Dinan was an eyewitness to those lips and no nose, that li the lips and noses, nose being shot off by the soldiers. Why did they do it? We cannot climb into their hearts in the 21st century and figure this out, divine the entrails of frogs and try to figure out why they did it. That's between them and, and God. But what happened, happened. And uh, so when you look at this, you know that there, <laughs> this definitely was patterned after an African man, uh, regardless of who uh, the identity of that man was. We now move to the first, to, through the second dynasty. Uh, Narmer Minis, he, he was uh, the, the creator of the dynastic rule of Egypt. 
He rules some 62 years in all. Uh, he unified the upper and lower Egypt uh, for the first time. This was all brought together. One of the things we know about him is that uh, he initiated the Herculean task of diverting the course of the Nile that created the Delta region uh, that uh, allowed Memphis to be built. Uh, he died while traversing a river. He, they were uh, going after a rogue Libyan band of troops and uh, a crocodile grabbed a hold of him as an older man and that must have been some struggle I'll tell you but that's how he died how he passed on this is all we have of uh, of Narmer Zosier Zosier in the third dynasty uh, he was a, a gentleman that um, did it, he began the extensive building with stone in fact he's the first one that put up a stone monolith in the Egyptian Empire exploited the copper mines in the Sinai Peninsula region. He extended his frontier to the first cataract of the Nile. Those who studied this know that there were uh, five cataracts in all. These are rocky areas where you cannot traverse by a boat and you have to actually go around it by land. And he extended the frontier about 500 miles south of Memphis. His chief advisor was a, a gentleman by the name of Imhotep. Imhotep, uh, a remarkable individual, in fact, if you were to look at his uh, resume, his obituary, I call this a resume obituary type stuff, is that uh, he, would, he could easily say, I'm a sage, I'm a, a, a scribe, a priest, an astronomer, I'm a philosopher, I'm an advisor to Zosier, I'm his chief uh, medical doctor, uh, I'm the grand architect of the 204 foot stepped pyramid in Saqqara. He was worshipped, by the way, as a god for uh, the next 3,000 years. And uh, some early Christians, in fact, worshipped him as the Prince of Peace. Uh, just, uh, th this man made quite a mark in, in uh, what he did. He, uh, he was a man that uh, was what we call the father of medicine. And uh, by the way, his father was an architect. His name was Conifer. And he treated more than, this gentleman treated more than 200 diseases. He had uh, 15 diseases of the abdomen that he was able to uh, to uh, identify 10 of the rectum 11 of the bladder 29 of the eye 18 of the skin he had this science of facial analysis where you could look into your face your eyes and determine what was going on now some of the stuff we might laugh at now with our technology but uh, and in medicine but he was uh, he had a lot of information going on at this particular time he knew of the circulation of the blood 4,000 years before the Europeans did I like that upper right hand corner picture he's kind of peeking down at you don't you, don't you like that Khufu builder of the Great Pyramid <laughs> this thing this man built the Great Pyramid and the only thing we can find is a poor poor little statue of him this is the only likeness we have of Khufu. He built the 140-foot ship that we see there. And, and if, if those have been in the sands of Giza, you, you can see that that ship, it's in a, its own house. It was uh, a ship that uh, when they had the, the pyramid set up, they built a uh, kind of a, a cavern or, or a, a, a pit. And they put the ship down inside that pit. And um, they pulled it out and they were able to... It was supposed to be a ship that was to take him into the afterlife. That was the religious ideology of the day. Menkur, builder of the third great pyramid. By the time he came along, <laughs> the national coffers were pretty much depleted. His pyramid is not nearly as, uh, as incredible as the first two. I'll tell you, you take it on its own rights, and I'll tell you, it is an incredible work of art. He was known as a just man, uh, as a man of meek spirit, uh, a quiet man, uh, mild temperament, forthright. He studied a lot of religions. Uh, of, the, of his day and um, just a very well uh, knowledgeable uh, well read man we now move to the this particular uh, part in the 11th dynasty uh, Mentu Hotep this particular gentleman was uh, a man who was regarded as the greatest uh, person of the 11th dynasty the actual founder of it the king of the upper and lower Egypt and uh, his wife Kawit in the lower right hand part of your screen provides some valuable details that I believe it's important and for a long time this debate has been going on and some people claiming that um, Egypt 
is not black um some people are saying that egypt has never been black egypt has never been black you know and even the bible itself alludes to the chances of egypt being black scientists have come out saying that egypt is black so with me here i'm having um some five facts that shows truly that egypt was black so stay with me as i'm going to present this um so the first proof that egypt was black is diverse population in the ancient egypt so it continues by saying ancient egypt was situated at the crossroad of africa the middle east and the mediterranean mediterranean making it a melting point of cultures and people the nile river a significant lifeline for egypt facilitated trade and interactions with neighboring regions as a result the population of ancient egypt like included a mix of indigenous african population as well as people from near east and the mediterranean example is um the archaeological findings um archaeological findings of an ardent burials of artifacts that suggest a mixture of cultural and ethnic influences in ancient egypt for instance we had the amarna period under hanitan so a shift in artistic styles and religious practices that reflected a mix of egyptian and foreign influences so you know the first uh, proof according to the article that i looked at it shows that um egypt had a vast population you know and when it is situated along the crossroad of africa it means that there is a lot of sharing the interaction between um africans at that point who are those places we have places like uh the nile valley which is a, a significant part of egypt which also alludes to especially where black people were before you know um the second proof is artwork and historical depictions ancient egypt art often depicted individual of varying skin tones including darker shades some representations such as the famous uh, bust of nefertiti or images of temple relief have been interpreted to show people with what could be considered black features um this has led some scholars to argue for the presence of black african population in ancient egypt that is artwork and historical de uh, depictions you know the skin tones uh including darker shades represent uh the nefertiti um or images of temple reliefs which shows that black people occupied egypt at some point in their life specifically africans the third one is um, interactions and trade with sub-Saharan Africa. Egypt engaged in a trade and diplomatic relations with regions further south in Africa, such as Nubia, uh, modern-day Sudan, and Pant, likely modern-day Somalia or Eritrea. These interactions facilitated cultural exchanges and movement of goods, technologies, and even people between Egypt and Sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, that is um, how people disseminated information, goods, and even people themselves, because these people interacted um, into marriages, which happened, and this shows um, the interactions and 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 trade, you know, with the Sub-Saharan Africa. This also shows that it is true that we add some interaction now for example examples are being provided here for example the presence of goods like um ebony ivory gold and exotic animals in egypt tombs and temples suggest that trade relationships with regions in sub-saharan africa additionally um additionally depictions of nubian Emissaries in Egypt, art and inscriptions point to diplomatic ties between Egypt and southern neighbors. I mean, that's 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 makes sense. That's totally makes sense because if you look at the interactions and even the presence of the goods which were being um, used as a means of trade, like the ebony, ivory, gold, exotic animals, you know, 
totally tells you that these people came from Africa, even the goats, the jowls themselves. And even today they're in museums and they tell you that Africans were already there, you know. Uh, number four is categorization based on geography and language. <clears throat> so let's, li let's listen to this. In ancient Egypt, texts and inscriptions People were usually categorized based on their geographical origins or linguistic affiliations. Rather than racial char uh, characteristics, terms like Rest Kush referred to people from Nubian, while Asiatics denoted from people uh, from population from the Near East. Example, the Amarna letters, a collection of diplomatic um, correspondence between Egypt pharaohs and foreign rulers. Mention various foreign entities based on the geographical locations rather than their racial identities. This underscores the importance of place, culture, rather than race in ancient Egyptian perception. You know? So really this shows the interaction based on geography and language you know the language was used as a means of denoting or knowing that uh, this given group came from a given place and also geography also played a part in ensuring that people also know and have this truth number five is the racial composition the racial composition of ancient Egypt requires a nuanced uh, and multifaced approach that considers the limitation of applying modern concepts of race to ancient civilization. It is crucial to engage with diverse scholarly perspectives of archaeological evidence to construct a more comprehensive understanding of the past. Now listen, modern DNA analysis has shown that the population of ancient Egypt had genetic contributions from various groups emphasizing the intricate nature of population movements and interaction in ancient world ancient world such research highlights the need of caution in making definite uh, definitive claims about the racial makeup of ancient Egypt in as much as these articles uh, show some cautions that we should not just um, depict ourselves within a one group it also shows that we need to consider that there might have been other groups but when you look at even the proofs that the article have given the article have given so much many proofs that shows that black people were there or black people directly interacted with people who claimed that they were egypt in that time which they were also black people i want you to give me your opinions in this issue because i believe that this has been a, a debate that has been happening for the longest period of time so tell me what you think about this i'll be waiting you on the other side let's talk let's chat about this what do you feel about this do you feel like egypt is black or is it otherwise tell me what you think about this situation in the video until then let's meet in the next video peace love and harmony as you always know salute